Hi, I'm David Greenabout, one of the reference librarians at Clayton State. Welcome to the special social distancing video version of my library research and information literacy session. I've broken what would be a single in-class session into five shorter videos. This is the second of the series, and today I'm going to talk to you about different kinds of information sources and which tools you can use to locate them. In other videos in this series, I talk about different search strategies you can use while searching library tools. I take a live look at the library homepage and conduct searches using those tools. I talk about critically evaluating the information sources you find. And finally, I discuss how and why to cite your sources and avoid plagiarism. This section is about information sources. There are three main types of information sources you can use for your research project books, articles from journals, and sources found online. Each has their own particular characteristics, and each has a library tool you can use to search and locate them effectively. Let's take a look at each in turn. The first type of source I want to talk about is books. For remote research, you may think books are less usable since we're not actually in the library, but as a matter of fact, the Clayton State Library has developed a pretty extensive collection of electronic books, which are accessible from anywhere if you use your SWAN credentials to authenticate. So you still actually have access to a large part of our book collections. Libraries often categorize books as circulating or reference. This mostly has to do with how the books are meant to be used. Circulating books are largely intended to be read in depth from start to finish or some significant portion thereof. As you read, you build up a narrative. It could be a literary narrative, or a scholarly or historical narrative. It's a comprehensive picture that builds up as you go along. Reference books, by contrast, are meant to be referred to, as the name implies. You don't read it cover to cover. Instead, you dip into it to pull out one particular fact or article or definition that you're looking for. Since this type of usage is generally brief and sporadic, these books are usually not checked out of the library, but left available for multiple people to use as they need them. Again, a large part of both our circulating book and reference book collections are available electronically from the CSU library, so you can have access to them even if you're not able to come to the actual physical library. The tool to use for searching the book collections is the library catalog. I'll talk in more detail about how to do this in the next video in this series. But just for starters, you can access the catalog either at the URL on this slide or by going to the library homepage and clicking the blue catalog button on the left hand side. Next we have journal articles. Now the good news here is that almost all journal articles these days can be found online using library databases, so they're accessible from off campus. Journal articles tend to be briefer and more narrowly bounded than books, focusing on a smaller scope, but also they're often more timely as the publishing turnaround time is shorter for journals than the book industry. Throughout your academic career, you're going to be asked to rely heavily on scholarly journals. So let's take a minute to describe specifically what that means. Scholarly journals, or academic or peer-reviewed journals, the three terms are used more or less interchangeably. They refer to the publication process, how an article gets into print. Scholarly journals are usually contrasted with popular magazines, so let's start there. In a popular magazine, an author submits an article to the editor who either rejects or accepts it, probably makes some changes, and then puts it in the magazine. In a scholarly journal, the author, or a team of authors if it's a group effort, submits the manuscript, and the publisher turns around and farms it out to other scholars in the field, the peers, who review it, hence the name. The other scholars submit feedback to the publisher about whether the scholarship is sound, the methods valid, the results derived properly from the data, and so forth, and then the publisher makes the decision about whether to print the article, return it to the authors for revision, or reject it outright. So by the time an article sees print in a scholarly journal, 
it's already got some cachet of authority to it because it's undergone that round of preliminary review before publication. The differences between scholarly and popular articles all stem mainly from the different audiences they're meant for, which is the fourth row of the table you see on this slide. Since scholarly articles are intended for researchers and students in the field, they're written with very specific language, including terms of art known in that field but perhaps unfamiliar to laypersons. They don't spend a lot of time getting the reader up to speed because they assume you're already well versed in the subject. Authors' names and scholarly credentials are pretty much always given, whereas in a popular magazine, authors don't always get a byline on the article. And scholarly journals also include footnotes, bibliographies, and works cited because they want to show the prior scholarship that they're building upon. The third column in this table represents yet another type of periodical, the trade publication. These are intended for people actually working in a given field. And there are trade titles for just about any profession you'd care to name, from dentistry to accounting to librarianship to commercial aviation. These journals basically are intended to help you do your job well, and will include news, announcements, and interviews that are specifically relevant to people who do whatever it is for a living. There may be times when they are useful for your scholarly research, but that's not their main focus. The tools you'll use to search for articles are the library databases. Now, you'll often hear your professors tell you to search Galileo for articles. That's not entirely accurate, as Galileo is really a large collection of individual databases, and we also have access to some other databases that are not a part of Galileo. Kind of like how you don't really watch Cox Cable, you watch individual channels you subscribe to as a part of your cable package and maybe pick up a few broadcast channels as well. The CSU library gives you access to over 200 different databases, which you can reach via the alphabetical list on the library homepage. But for convenience sake, we also have direct links to five of the most useful and popular databases broken out in their own section. I'll be going into detail about how to search the databases for articles in the next video in this series. There will also be times when you'll want to refer to information sources available on the web. These come in all types and varieties. A number of open source scholarly publications are freely available online. Most, if not all, government agencies publish reports and data on the web, as well as the vast number of corporate, academic, and journalistic entities that put out material. One sticky point about using information sources that are freely available out there on the web is that if you're not already intimately familiar with the source, you may not be able to vouch for its accuracy and reliability. In an upcoming video, I'll talk about how to critically evaluate the sources you're working with, but as a general rule, it's best to stick with resources that you know to be accurate for your research. One way to locate good, reliable sources is to use the LibGuides. These are special, purpose-built pages made by your Clayton State librarians linking you to online sources specific to particular information needs. We've built LibGuides to serve sp certain specific classes, including English 1101 and 1102, and also to both narrow but non-class specific topics and broader subjects. There are also more general LibGuides not tied to a subject area, with useful information about how to use the library effectively and take advantage of our offerings. That's it for this section. In the next section, I'll give you a tour of the library homepage and show you how searches work in the different tools linked from the page. Thanks for tuning in. And as a reminder, the librarians are available to help you even when we're all in our own spaces. You can reach us by phone, by email, or via live chat from the library homepage. Bye for now. See you next time.